Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I'm pretty badly injured because I just went up and I cleared out most of the mobs that were making all that terrible noise. So, we need to kind of fix that a little bit. Let's actually, yeah, do that. Split the work up. I am going to make myself some moss to keep my bone throwing knives in stock. And I'm also going to make some smooth stone to make a juicer from Magical Crops, a juice squeezer, excuse me. Oh, I only need one piece for that. Already done. Let's just take one, take that. Clicking in all the wrong places, of course. And then I need some glass bottles, I believe. If I go into the uses of this, I can use the apples I have, and I believe this apple juice will be much more beneficial, but I need glass bottles. And if you saw the surface, we don't have much in the way of sand, but we do have cracked sand. And I also happen to have three clay exactly perfectly, which I can take into an unfired clay bucket, and all my furnaces are, of course, in work. Let's just clear that one out. Let's give it two sticks so I don't waste an entire piece of charcoal. We can take our unfired clay bucket, we can burn it, and we can get ourselves something that can hold water. It can also hold lava, but it can only do so once. Let's cook up the rest of that smooth stone. So, if I go up to the surface, and I get myself some water, I can take water plus cracked clay and get myself some good old-fashioned sand. Of course, doing it this way over and over again. What the heck? Oh, Zombo. It gets pretty annoying pretty quickly. So I am going to spend a little bit of the wood I received from quest packs. Oh, spider. Spider died there somehow. I don't think I killed the spider there. Weird. Let's put some of this away. I can spend some of the wood that I got to make myself... Well, first of all, I think I have more slabs. First of all, make myself a crafting table. And let's just spend some of the wood. I know I have sticks, but I don't feel like walking to the chest again. Make a super crafting frame. Then I can make a chest. And what a super crafting frame will do is it will look in an inventory it's attached to, or into the player's inventory. And if it has all the items it needs, it can create a crafting recipe. I'll show you what I mean. That, that wasn't a very good explanation. If we dig one down farther into here, and we put our chest, and put all the sand into there, and fill up our clay bucket, why all these zombies? I mean, I know there's another pool of water over there, but they can't have all been hanging out and spotted me. Annoying. Rude. So, we put down the super crafting frame, and it can create these ghosts of... Of course, I put all my cracked sand inside of there. Get myself a cracked sand. Can you go back to programming it with... No, I have to pull it off. Give it a full water bucket and a piece of cracked sand. It confirms that crafting recipe. Now, if I take my bucket and I right-click on it, it crafts! It's using the cracked sand inside of the chest 
and the bucket in my hand. And as you can see, when I right clicked, I also filled up the bucket at the same time. So I can stand here and I can hold down right click, get myself a nice supply of sand. And now I can use that sand to make bottles to make myself fruit juice so I can heal and not feel bad about being inefficient with my apples. Not that apples are going to be in short supply. Well, they might be until I start, you know, getting oak trees, because there aren't exactly any saplings up on the surface right now. Let's put eight in there, and let's actually keep the uh, keep the rest. Put that away. Put all that away. Just do inventory management while I wait. Ah, yes. The other thing I wanted smooth stone for. Do I have a piece of flint? Yes, I do. I only have one. I should hunt down more flint while it's time. In this pack, we can make a chisel with just a flint and a stick. And as I'm sure many of you know, with a chisel, we can do this to smooth stone. We can make mossy stone bricks. And with mossy stone bricks, we can make moss balls and if we put moss balls on our throwing knives they'll gradually regrow now we have six pieces of glass got our glass bottles did i put my apples away now and we have apple juice Apple juice, I believe, is a bit of a special one because we can actually drink it even while we're completely full and it will continue to fill up our satiation, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not sure if satiation will actually continue growing, like, indefinitely. Okay, let's check our quest book, because I'm pretty sure I did at least one quest in all of that faffing around. Yeah, what the world embraces. That gave me some marble, and it gave me some more crafting frames, which I will put here and here, respectively. Let's actually put away the stairs and the stone, too. Okay. So, now, oh, it's nighttime again. Of course. Good timing. <sighs> well, I think I am going to stop recording for a moment, and I am just going to dig down a little bit, seek out that noisy cave, and maybe some dirt. So, I'm a little bit of an idiot. I got a little bit bored digging down, so I decided to come up and do some decorating. Just the basics of the basics. I haven't really decided on a final look, although I do like these marble block floors. And I realized there's some dirt right there staring me in the face. So, I don't really need to dig down for it, unless there's just like only a couple of blocks here. But no, of course not. It's a nice, good supply of dirt. For once, actually, decorating ended up being useful, because I probably wouldn't have noticed this if I wasn't replacing all the walls. Of course, now I'm going to have to backfill all of this, because I don't want knobs spawning in here, but, well, that's the price we pay. Alright, BRB again. So, you remember how I said that I needed to get some more flint? Yeah, that's still a thing. Thankfully, I realized it before my shovel ran out, because I believe the shovel is the tool that you use on the uh, slate. Yes, it is. So, we can repair our shovel at least. Let's repair our pick, too, while we're here. And now we can go on a little bit of an item hunt. I believe there's another grass punching thing I still need anyway. Uh, pasture seeds, I believe, yes. And it is daytime, so let's hunt. 
I just realized that before I journey out too far, I should probably make something to help me find my way home. This pack does not have journey map. So, what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to make myself a landing spot, and I'm going to pillar up. This pack does have Bibliocraft, and its atlas is a good navigation tool. But I don't think I really have the materials to make that right now. And everything everywhere looks pretty much the same. There's maybe that straw man over there as a landmark, but I'm just going to make something a bit more direct. This is a lovely little trick that is from Vanilla. Bloosh. And now, when I get far enough away that this pillar is just fading out of sight, I pillar up again with a torch pointing back towards it. And I can repeat that, just having torches pointing back to the previous pillar, until I have as many as I need. And the more layers of these pillars I have, the easier it is to find my way back home. It's really helpful in a pinch, and in a way I like it even more than having an atlas on me, or a waypoint compass, because it's just kind of instinctual. It's something that you just look at and, you know, you visually see which way you need to go. It's kind of a this way, you idiot sign, and I need that. Alright, back to punching grass. All right, we are back home again, just in time. I literally saw a zombie spawn out there instants after I closed the door. And here's our haul. We got some clay, some mob drops, lots of flint. I didn't get any more wood. I should have got more wood. And we got those pasture seeds, which means we have a quest complete. We, in fact, have three quests complete because clay buckets was something I wasn't supposed to get yet. That gives us some carrot and potato seeds, as, long as, as well as some more regular seeds. We get yet more dirt. And let's pick some more marble, because I like it as flooring. Now we get into the actual meat and potatoes of regrowth. We get to start farming. And this is where the grind will come from. <sighs> it was going so well, too. I was out and an adventuring and, and finding things and punching grass and building pillars. But now here I am, underground. Well, I could finish decorating, I suppose. That zombie is right up at my door, isn't he? Ah, oh, there he is. Sir, I regret to inform you I do not want your watch tower. I swear we get more aggressive every year. Okay. Put that in construction. Okay, I'm going to finish decorating and then I will start deciding on where I want to put our farm. Well, look what I found. I finally found the damn cave that was making all the noise. Hmm, that, that dog is not friendly. He's also right beneath me. There we go. And that is why ranged weapons are king. Let's see if I can get down there safely. And at least light up enough of the local area that I don't have to deal with this noise anymore. Ugh, noisy neighbors are just the worst. I guess this is the video game equivalent of hitting my broom on the wall. It involves a bit more genocide. I wish it could work that way in the real in the real world. Hmm. Probably for the best that it doesn't. Shoot. Yeah. 
Hey there, creeper. Where are you at? Where are you at? I heard you. Don't be shy. Well, there's a spider at least. Now I don't want to jump down there because I know that there's a creeper about. But where did it go? Mysterious creeper. Oh, there it oh, you're just a concussion creeper. You're no problem. Those guys don't hurt you, they just teleport you a random distance. And since I think I've mostly taken care of the locals... I'm finding tons of marble in this area, too. Uh, no, you're just concussion. Still, it's good to keep in practice. Mini Enderman. Mm. They're actually tougher than regular Endermen. I think I'm going to keep my distance on that one. Let's see if I can lure him around the corner and melee him. Yes, plan was a success. Jeez. All those mini Enders are bad news. Just, just don't make eye contact. This is probably a good enough distance. But I'm kind of curious how far this cave goes. I did see some monsters up on the surface. Does this lead to the surface? It does. So this is where those zombies were coming from that we saw before. That's good to know. This might serve as a secret entrance to the base if I can track it down. Nope. Mr. Skeletal. Hello, where did you come from? of bones. That's always a good way to start off. Jeez, there's so many skeletons. must be coming in from the surface. Maybe I should call it quits until daytime. Eh, nah. I don't think I have too much further. Yeah, there's a dead end. Okay, so this cave is pretty well dealt with, I think. Hopefully that'll be enough that I don't have to deal with my base being freaking haunted. Those Ender Minis will eventually despawn when I go on walkabout somewhere. I'm just going to leave them alone and let them live their lives in peace. Go and be a family man. Now, how do I get back up? Because I kind of just randomly drilled. Ah! Yeah, here is where I think I'm going to set up my farm. This was that big patch of dirt that you saw earlier. It was so big that I don't think I'm really going to backfill this area. I'm just going to smooth out the floors, expand on it a little, and this will be where our initial farm is. This is also how the progress on the decor is going. Uh, this is where I started looking for that cave. You can see it was kind of the worst place to start, but the sound was loudest here, and I kind of just traced it in and around, and that's where I found the cave. So yeah, 
This is how the decoration went. Uh, I really like the marble floors. I'm still kind of undecided on these tiles. But, hey, I normally don't decorate at all, so it's a thousand percent better than my usual. Okay, I'll talk to you all again in a bit when I have the farm set up. Actually, I lied, because check this out. I just noticed that in that... Oh, well, that's, that's probably not good. Uh, <laughs> arrow in the head. I just noticed that in our last excavation, we got a zombie brain. These are useful in this pack because we have witching gadgets, which means we can take some wood slabs, make a drying rack from Tinkers, and we can take that and we can put the brain on there, and in not too much time, I think it's something like 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. I don't know, it's, I, I remember this being practically instant, but my memory is not so good. Let's let's plug up this wall while we wait. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, French tiles. And that whole area is lit up, so it's fine. Ah, there it goes. It turns into brain jerky. Brain jerky is a really useful food. Not only does it give you full hunger, full satiation, but it also gives you a couple of points in a primal aspect of research for Thomcraft. So if we go out there and we find a sinister node and we farm up some brains, we can get into Thomcraft with a pretty good amount of research all built up. In the meantime, though, this will be more a little bit of serendipity. It especially helps because I am down to my last six apple juice, and I'm only just getting the farm going, so it might be a little while before we have a stable source of food. Although we do have that straw man out there, and we have these wheat, so we aren't going to be starving. Okay, now I'll talk to you when the farm is getting ready. So, I was going out to chop some more wood and get some more charcoal for some more torches to light up the farm, and our base is right over there, just to tell you how far out I've gone, when I saw we have two oil wells just right freaking there. I don't think that's even out of the line of sight of our first initial pillar. That, that is extremely lucky. Holy hell, this map is a good seed. I, I think I might have to copy down the seed string just for if I ever want to play this in the future, just because, holy crap. <laughs> I mean, we got a straw man over there. We've got a pretty good spot. We've got, yeah, just wow. Also, not like, not just like 10 feet away. Freaking hungry node. Just, I mean, good God. <laughs> Hungry nodes are a bit of a mixed blessing. I mean, I can't get too close to it right now, or I'll get sucked in, but... Holy crap, is that, a, is that another? But, but yeah, I mean, later on, I get... The witch... Holy crap! <laughs> this seed is crazy. <laughs> I, I think that before I close out, I'm going to have to show this to you guys because I mean yeah this is I, I think this might be the holy grail of map seeds for regrowth all right I've got this place relatively beautified I picked out just a kind of blank texture for the ceiling something unoffensive and I dug out this whole farm area Decided to give it different colored walls. We have a chest back in here for seeds and bone meal and other such things. Got some compost bins, which we'll get into in a minute. All that's left is to get a piece of dirt. And let me show you a little trick. 
if we make this a water pad and fill it up, it'll still hydrate tiles. It's functionally not really any different than just putting water down there. But I find that it looks a little better. It kind of breaks up the feel of the farm a bit less. And also, you can walk over it and not have to swim out if you get caught. So, let's just get this whole thing tilled up. If you accidentally make a water pad, you can just till it again and it Alright. And now we have ourselves a nice indoor grow bed. Next up, we need to get ourselves some crop sticks. I should have put these over here. Let's get two stacks. Two stacks of crop sticks, which I believe is a quest. That's ah, the first part of it. Okay, we need wheat, sugarcane, and mandrake root. But before we start crossbreeding to get that sugarcane and mandrake root, I think I am going to want to try and maximize some seeds. Get triple tens on our initial baseline crops. And actually, while I'm here, let's get rid of these spares. Let's just put these in here. These will be gradually eaten up and turned into compost, which we can use to make garden soil, which will help things grow even faster and doesn't require hydration. So, the fastest, easiest way to maximize your crops is to crossbreed them four ways. What I'll be doing here is I'll have the crop in the center and I'll just fully mature it with some bone meal. It'll spread out to these four sides and because this is easy mode we won't have to worry about weeds so we can just leave this. Then I'll take this out and I will crossbreed into here to try and get a really strong piece of wheat. With four breeding partners like this, we can get it up to, I think, 3-3-3 three, three, three on the first breed, which is a pretty big jump. If you do this right, you can get it up to maximization in three or four generations. It's pretty darn fast, actually. And you can see that with a little bit of a bone meal boost on the center, it'll spread pretty quick. So let's get the rest of these set up. And let's just do it here. Potatoes. Carrots. Let's do that here. Belladonna. Just kind of get these spaced so that there's no chance of, say, the children of this potato infecting the Belladonna here. At least not until we want to crossbreed them. All right. And now we get into the true heart of regrowth. Industrial plant incest. We're going to breed the children with their children, with their children, with their children, until we get the strongest possible plants. Well, this is all doing its sick and twisted and wrong thing, I think I'm going to build myself 
a, uh, a plant analyzer. I've already smelted myself some glass. Can make that into panes. Let's put that in here. And we'll need one piece of wood slab. We're going to need a stone slab. We're going to need a couple pieces of wood, and I think we're going to need three sticks, if I remember how the recipe goes. Yeah. Okay, and... Analyzer. Oops. There we go. Yep. Stone slab, wood slab, two pieces of wood, three sticks, and a pane. I remember that perfectly. You can tell how many times I've done this. And let's put this right next to our drawer there. And I believe that that is a quest later on, and that'll give us an agricultural journal, so I won't bother making one. And I think that, unlike better questing, HQM will actually remember that I built this, so we're good. Alright, here we are. The first couple of groups have fully matured. And yes, you do want to wait for their full maturity to make sure you get all four breeding pairs. So let's put down crop sticks. And ah, heck. Let's spend a little bit of bone meal. Get these all matured. And now we wait some more. Each of these will have a child in the center. I'll go up and I'll scan it. Is this one? No. It's just a render error. That's weird. But yeah, they'll have a child. I'll go up and scan it. And I'm going to look for at least a triple two but hopefully higher. And if I get something that's good, I'll knock it all down, replant that in the center, have it spread out, and I'll repeat. And three or four generations of that should be just about good enough for me to get... Ah, here we have one. We have our first... our first one to go. Huh. That's a really good one, actually. Yeah, I think that if I really wanted to go for broke, I might be able to see as high as triple five on that. Here we have a bunch of extra seeds and some wheat. I can just chuck all of that into the compost bin. That'll gradually get turned into the compost. We can fully mature the sec this one here. And there we go. That is the rhythm of how this is going to go. All right. While waiting for the crops to grow, I have dug out a nice little patch of dirt up here on the surface. And I'm going to take these pasture seeds that I broke a bunch of grass for. And we're actually going to get ourselves a nice little lawn. It's not exactly healing the whole world, but hey. It's something living in green. That's... that's progress. More importantly, it's actually somewhat useful. Because with this, I can take some bone meal. What the heck? I'm getting more and more rendering errors. I don't know what's up. But yeah, I can take some bone meal. And I can do this, and it still won't render. Do I have... I have Optifine in here, but do I have chunk load? Yeah. I found it has problems if I have chunk loading on anything other than default. I don't know how it got to smooth. There it goes. That's all nice and proper. You see, it's a bunch of grass, and it seems to have a better drop rate than dead grass. Plus, it's really easy to spawn. So once all this grass spreads, I can pretty much farm myself up batches of clay and floral fertilizer. 
I can get all the Batania flowers, get all the pretty fireworks, and they're actually inside, they won't explode indoors, and I can start to make progress. Five, six, nine? You can already get up to nine. I don't think five and six is too much of a growth, though, so I might just... Seven, six, four is pretty good. <laughs> okay, potato, you go on to the next. You are strong, potato. You do country proud. Yes. And the Belladonna's being a bit slow, but I think you get how this goes for right now. So I'll probably not show much more of this terrible filth. At least not until we get into interspecies depravity. Yeah, that'll... That'll be a whole new frontier. I hope you're all satisfied with yourselves, you filthy animals. Alright, it's getting late, and I think I'm about ready to wrap up my first recording session with this. I finally collected enough spider silk to build myself a bed. And it's not night, so yeah. Let's do one last run through of the base. Got the bedroom, got the farm room. These potatoes can potentially pull up a 10-10-10 for me. And everything else is progressing right along. Upstairs, the grass is almost completely spread. And I even have a little chest here with some Batania flowers. And later on, I'll be spending up all my floral fertilizer and seeing if I can get Batania started. So, as we saw before, this world seed is pretty crazy. I've got oil wells, I've got the straw man over there. And I think this is too good just to hold on to myself. So, before I go as a sort of parting gift, I will go into here, and I think if I click recreate, more world options, there is the seed. Yes. I'm going to copy this out into the description as well. So if you want to use this map, you can go on right ahead. And I think that I haven't even gotten into everything that's going to be out there. This is pretty crazy. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm not sure how much I recorded, maybe enough for two or three episodes. So, good night.